chapter 2. And then you can go back over to Matthew chapter 1. Or excuse me, Mark chapter 1. We're going to get started here um, this morning. We'll receive the offering and everything at the end of service this morning. But um, it says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Ah, and there ought to be a shout of joy and thanks right there. Because all things have passed, old things have passed away and all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus or through Jesus Christ and has given us everybody say us, us. That, that means say, that means me <laughs> that means me that's right uh, when it says us it's talking to all of us it's not talking to just me it's not just talking to uh, just Randy it's talking to all of us it says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is that God was put was was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed us to the world of re word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors of Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Father, I thank you today for your word. And Lord, I pray this morning as we would receive the word. Lord, in fact, your word tells us the only way we can receive the word is not by the natural ear, not by natural understanding, not even in, in our own mind, but Lord, that it has to be received by the Spirit. And so, Lord, I pray that this morning your Spirit anoint our ears to hear and anoint our eyes to see. And Lord, give us an anointing today to have understanding, Lord, that what we would hear would become life, what we would hear would bring liberty, what we would hear would bring joy. And Lord, I just thank you today. Lord, I ask for your anointing to be upon me that I'd clearly and effectively communicate your heart. Lord, we bless you for this day. In your precious name. And everybody that believed it said, Amen. Amen. Well, come on, give the worship team a big hand. They can be dismissed. Amen. 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 Now, now while they're coming down, let me... Um, let, let me just say this. I know some of you are here on some false pretenses. Well, if we get there early enough, maybe Jesus will help the cowboys. And I'm telling you, I, I fasted and I prayed for them. Listen, you being here early ain't going to make a difference now. No, no. Uh, Hey, listen, uh, and, and I think Pastor Tiffany said this earlier, this is the way it should look all the time. Actually, it should be full, full all the time. And so uh, we're glad that you're here for whatever reason you came for, go to the Cowboy game or whatever. Listen, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just glad you're here. Um, but uh, I'm believing God to, to share with you and impart into you today um, this word. Uh, and, and if to be just to kind of give you the, the, to make him known. To make him known. Excuse me, I think that was water. And some of you may get dripped on out there. They told me earlier there was a drip somewhere about where Ryan's sitting. And uh, so if you get dripped on, just, hey, it's, it's where the glory comes out. It's the spout where the glory comes out. Just uh, sit right there and it'll help, help you grow. Um, but um, but as we've been talking over the last several weeks, one to grow on. How many of you have taken the opportunity to, to do your seed journal? Okay, if you haven't, get with it. it, it it's okay. It, I mean, listen, um, it, it's, if, you've, if you've begun it, you can recognize it won't take a scientist, especially a rocket scientist, to do. 
It, it was done that way on purpose. And listen, as we go along, we'll get better at it. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to, to be better understand how to do some of those things. It, this is our first one. So listen, don't, don't look at it and go, well, this is all it is. Hey, listen, just use it. And allow it to be seed in your life. And allow it to, to help you to grow. But, but we've been talking about one to grow on. And, and, and I want to take, as, as we continue even that thought this morning, one to grow on. Listen, when we talk about one to grow on, remember the challenge is this, is that you would lead one to Christ. You'd be in the process of leading one to Christ. And that you would disciple one. We put into your hands that seed journal, which is, you can use this first one, a new believer. And this would be awesome for a new believer. You go, well, man, I've been saved for, for 15 years, for 20 years. Well, listen. And that's wonderful, but you need it. And the reason we need it is because we've got to be disciples so that we can be disciplers. But the reason we do discipleship is so that we can make him known. We don't do discipleship, so, so to speak, so we can put a diploma on the wall and say, look, I finished seed journal number one. And I want you to, I want you to do that, okay? So I'm not trying to devalue that. Nor am I trying to devalue education at all. I'm not. I'm an educator. That's what my, I have an education degree. <laughs> and so I'm not devaluing education at all. But can I tell you this morning that the, the idea when we do discipleship, it's not about information. It's not about education, but it's about transformation. And the reason we're transformed is so that we can make him known. Even this morning as, as uh, Melody and I would pray for the, the service, man, I just felt like the Lord dropped this in my spirit. In the beginning, God said, let us make man in our own image. But sin entered the world and corrupted, corrupted God's image, corrupted even God's plan, if you want to put it that way. But can I tell you this morning that if we will apply ourselves and allow ourselves to be tutored by the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2, 27, it says that I am not in need of a teacher because the anointing that abides within me teaches me. You say, well, why do I need discipleship then? Or why do I need somebody to disciple me? Listen, we need each other. You and I will not do discipleship, not do Christianity on our own. It's not mapped out that way. That's not the intentions of Christ, but we do it corporately. Yes, we're held responsible individually. I can't say, well, well, Randy didn't help me study. Well, Randy didn't, or, or, or I'll quit picking on Randy. Uh, <laughs> 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 Tiffany didn't help me. She was mean to me and I just couldn't, I didn't feel like praying. Listen, I can blame it on Tiffany all I want to but the truth is, is I'm held responsible individually for my own discipleship and my own walk. Yet we do this together corporately. And so we need each other in this. We walk together in this. Jesus pulled the 12. He called the 12. And, and as I was saying, I, we do discipleship because what discipleship does, it puts us back into proper balance again with God. We are submitting to Christ and his image is then made in us or made known in us or through us. And so discipleship, what discipleship does, or what, and, and I'll talk even more about it as I go through this morning, but what discipleship does is it puts us back into the place where we come into and come under submission to God and come into submission to the image of Christ. Then we can be made in his image. See, too many times, discipleship, we, we, we look at it as an educate or look at it from the information and the education side of it, and we become in the image of the education, and it's not it. We are being transformed into his image. And so anyway, I read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 this morning to you because there were several things that, that I, I wanted to point out. Paul would say this, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation reconciling man to God. 
That's, that's simply what it was. That's what the ministry of reconciliation is. Reconciling fallen man to a righteous God. Now, we can't do it because we ourselves are unrighteous. We, we can't do it because we ourselves are fallen. And yet, Paul would say, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation, not in our own ability, but through faith in Christ. He said, so we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. And he goes on in verse 20, he says, then we are ambassadors. What do ambassadors have a ministry? They have a job. They have a purpose. But the ambassador, when they go, they're not an ambassador to themselves. They are an ambassador to the nation, to the government that has sent them. So they don't go and say, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to just enjoy, um, if, if I'm an ambassador, um, let's say, uh, to the United Kingdom or to Europe. So, you know, I don't go there. Well, I'm going to just, I, I live here. I'm going to enjoy what I want to, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to just uh, take this time. They've placed me here. And so I'm going to just enjoy Europe. Well, that's wonderful, but that's not your job. That's not your ministry. That's not what you call, you've been called to be an ambassador of the United States in that area. And so listen, today, when, when we come to the knowledge of Christ, you're not an ambassador to yourself. Well, I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, and where I want to do it. No, you and I are ambassadors of Christ. We have been reconciled to God through Christ, and he has given us his authority and ministry to do this, to point the world to Christ or to make him known. So when we do the discipleship challenge, when we do the and one to grow on challenge, it's not so that we can put a little notch on our belt and say, we accomplished that. Now, Pastor Scott will be happy for me. And I will be. But that's not why I'm doing it. The reason we're doing that is because I'm trying to help us understand that it's in our DNA, it's our responsibility to make him known. And when we will place ourselves in, in, into submission to the discipleship of the Holy Spirit, can I tell you this morning, we will make him known to the world. The righteousness of God in Christ. See, we cannot be righteous by ourselves. In fact, Isaiah would say that there are none righteous or that our righteousness is as filthy rags. In Romans, Paul would say, he says, for now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And so our righteousness is not what we can do. Listen, you can do all the journals you want to. You can do all the reading you want to. But until the Holy Spirit takes that and transforms you and changes you, all it's going to be is information. And I don't want it to just be information. I don't want it to be just some other obligation that we do. I want the things that we do in our discipleship, I want it to transform us. So that when we go wherever we would go, his transforming power is evident to those people that we come in contact with. I want people to see in me and in you, I want people to see Christ. I want people to go, why is it that you're this way? And why is it that in all the difficulties, this is the way you still respond? Why is it? I'm not going to say, well, it's because of me. It's because of my education. It's all the books that I've read. It's all the scriptures that I've read. I can only say it's the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in my life that's transformed me and changed me. And what you see is not me, but it's Christ. Because I've been given a ministry of reconciliation so that he will be known, not so that I'll be known, so that he'll be known. So we are his ambassadors, and so how do we become his ambassadors? I would even say, some would say, well, if, you're, if, you, if you know Christ, you're an ambassador. And I, and I would say that is, that is correct. But you know something, I, there's still a, a level of of. of education, if, you want, if we want to use that word this morning, there is a level of learning, there is a level of, of, uh, that we have to come to uh, uh, an understanding this morning. There, there are classifications or there, there are uh, credentials that we have to receive in order to be an ambassador. And 
I believe that probably th this scripture gives us a, a good picture of it and gives us, and, I, and I'll go into the detail of it, but Mark chapter one, verse 17, this, this to me over the last several years um, has become one of my, one of my personal scriptures. This is one of the things that, that I, I just, it stirs on the inside of me. And then Jesus said to them, who's them? It's the disciples. It's those that he's calling. He says, follow me. Follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. Our personal devotion is not just a spiritual exercise that we do to meet our obligations. Don't let, don't let our personal devotion, our personal discipleship just be um, something we do so that we can gain information or something that we do just so that we can feel better about, about ourselves. In fact, I would say some have used, and when I say some, I'm just talking generically there. I'm not even talking about anybody at the Destiny Center, but I would say some have used um, their personal devotion almost, as, almost as, as if it were superstitious. Well, if I do it, then God will love me more. And I'm going to tell you something today. There is not one thing you can do to make God love you more. Can I tell you something? There's not one thing you can do bad to make, you God, to make God love you less. Some of you need to get over yourselves. Well, God just doesn't love me because, and you begin to give all these excuses why. No, you don't love you because God loves you when you were at your worst, when you didn't have your makeup on, when you were smelly and all the other things. Listen, God loved you anyway. So you, didn't do, you won't do anything today to make him love you more, nor will you do anything to do today so bad that he's going to love you any less. He still gave his son. He still gave Jesus for us. And so this morning, as we look at discipleship, discipleship is not just some spiritual exercise that we do. We don't just get up in the morning and go, oh, I got my 15 minutes done. Now, we're doing it so that we can be transformed by Christ, through Christ. And so the discipleship this morning, as we look at Mark chapter one, verse 17, as I, I read Second Corinthians because I wanted you to see that we have a ministry of reconciliation because we've been called as ambassadors. But this morning, as we talk about to make him known, listen, it has to come through. Discipleship is following Christ. Let's, let's just make it real easy. Let's make it real simple this morning. It's just following Christ. Jesus said, go and make disciples, teaching them to observe Teaching them to follow, teaching them to do all the things that I've already commanded you to do. What did he tell them to do? What did he command them to do? Follow me. And so this morning as we desire to make him known, we can't make him known unless we're going to follow him. Well, well I'm going to be an ambassador of God and yet we don't follow him or follow after him. And if you don't follow after him, you don't know, you don't, we don't know how he deals with issues. We don't know how he speaks to that situation. We don't know the tenderness that we need unless we follow the master, unless we follow Jesus and we follow in his steps and we do exactly the way he says to do it. Well, I think this would be a good idea. I'll just tell, I'll just give them a piece of my mind and I'll let them. But is that the way Jesus would have us do it? And the only way we'll know is if we'll follow him. And so discipleship is following him. It's not about knowledge. It's not about gaining more knowledge. In fact, Paul would write in 1 Corinthians 8, 1, he says, knowledge puffs up. You know, there's a lot of people that have degrees on the wall because they have knowledge. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not discrediting knowledge at all. I think it's, it's, it's needed and it's useful and those kind of things. But if we say, well, look at all the knowledge I have. In fact, Jesus would, he would um, rebuke the, the Jews in John chapter 5. He says, you've studied the scriptures and they point toward me and yet you won't even come to me to find eternal life. I'm the one that can give it to you. I'm the one that can show you how to live. I'm the one. And yet you reject me. And yet you have your placards and you have your degrees on the wall. And all of those degrees point toward me, but you refuse me. So it's not about more information. It's not about gaining more knowledge. See, the church has more Christian education or more inf Christian information today than at any other time in history. 
I mean, why do they have Christian bookstores? Because they have something to sell in them. <laughs> there's more education. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, is that there's more information, there's more education than in any other time. But I cannot say that it is translated to better followers. Because we read and we study and yet we're not transformed because we're not following. We're following the notes or we're following the information, but are we truly following Christ? See, discipleship is not self-help. This is not Oprah or Dr. Phil or, or any of <laughs> your favorite, uh, you know, it's not Dr. Oz or whoever it is, you know. It's not, discipleship is not self-help. It will help you, but we're not trying to become a better version of ourselves. We're trying to be lost in Christ. We are trying to come into submission to Christ. And Jesus says in Matthew 16, 24, if anyone desires to come after me, if anyone desires to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In Barnes' notes, uh, in, in, uh, in their commentary, it says to, to, to deny and to, to, to deny oneself. That is, let him surrender to God his will, his affections, his body, and his soul. Let him not seek his own happiness as the supreme object, but be willing to renounce all and lay down his life also if required. If I'm going to deny myself, listen, this morning, I'm denying everything. Listen, one of the reasons it's important for us to fast is not so that, that we can manipulate God and maybe he'll answer my prayer. We fast to come into submission, to bring our appetites, to bring everything solely into captivity to Christ so that we might know him. And experience him, encounter him. See, to follow Christ, we are obedient to his teachings, his will and his way. Obe obedience is, is easy to say, but difficult to do. We don't have to teach our children how to be disobedient. They learn that pretty much on their own. It comes from, our, it comes from mom and dad, obviously. Because mom and dad struggle with obedience and disobedience. But when we talk about deny yourself, it's talking about being obedient. There's no way that we can follow Christ without being obedient. So obedience. See, in obedience, we give up our rights. In a sermon by Jeff Strite, in Times in the Trenches, in Trenches, excuse me, he writes this, several years ago, I was exchanging ideas with several people on BibleMaster.com, in the course of these conversations, I encountered a young man who had just been called up to go to Iraq because our nation had declared war on, on Saddam Hussein. The problem for this young man was he didn't want to go. He explained that he hadn't joined the army to go to war. He had joined because of the benefits, the pay, the college tuition, the insurance, etc., now, something's wrong with that kind of thinking. One of the primary functions of the military is to prepare for war. You've got to know that if you sign up, I'm sure it's somewhere in the job description that you may go to war. Armies do not exist to pass out benefits or perks. Armies exist to deal with conflicts, to defend their people, to fight the enemy, and hopefully contend against the evil. But there are people who actually join up hoping for a free ride. And that kind of mil mentality undermines the mil military of any nation. That same kind of mentality can also undermine the church. Too often believers sign up for the benefits. They expect Jesus to be there for them, but they don't expect to be there for him. That's the issue Jesus is addressing here in Matthew chapter 16. If you desire my benefits, then deny yourself. Take up your cross. Take up your cross. 
take up your cross in barns is, is a figurative exp- expression de- de- denoting that we must endure whatever is bur- burdensome or is trying or is considered disgraceful in following Christ. We, we love, Lord, I surrender all. But Lord, when it comes down to it, do I have to really surrender all? Lord, I give you all of my life, but can I keep this little part over here because I really enjoy partying with my friends. I really enjoy having uh, my issues on the computer. I really enjoy having, can I just keep that over there? Nobody has to know. It's just between me and you. And he said, there can be nothing between me and you. Nothing can hinder us. That if you desire to follow after me, then you must deny yourself, deny your will, deny your rights, and take up your cross. Those things that are burdensome and difficult, you take it up and you carry it without complaint and you carry it and you follow me. See, we are called to be his ambassadors. And his ambassador, as his ambassador, we imitate him. We imitate his decisions. We imitate his thoughts. We imitate his decisions. See, to follow me is to imitate Christ. And to imitate Christ, it takes action on our part. James would say, faith without works is dead. And so in order to imitate him, we must live out, not our lives, but Christ's life. See, we are transformed into his image, we are transformed and our lives become a reflection of Christ. Why? Because we are being transformed to make him known. Listen, the reason, the reason we're doing the, the one to grow on challenge is not so that, so that more people yet, yeah, well, let me, let me re, kind of rephrase that. Yes, it is so that more people will do discipleship. That is true. But I'm not doing, I'll just say this. I'm not getting commissioned because more people. <laughs> God's not keeping commission. Well, he had five more do, do that little booklet, so we'll give him. I'm not on commission, but I am here as an ambassador. I am here at, at having, having the ministry of reconciliation and trying to help you to be reconciled to God so that we would make him known to those that are not reconciled. To those that are lost. So is your discipleship making you into the image of Christ? Or is it making into the image of you? Or even someone else? See, we are his ambassadors. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you become. Fishers of men. See, fishing bait They use bait on a hook to entice the fish. Growing up, we didn't use a whole lot of live bait or fresh bait, I guess is what they would call it. We, we, we would use a, what they call a lure and they, different words, but the lure was to allure those fish. Oh, look at that little fishy over there. Let's go eat that. (laughs) Right? That's what you're hoping when you throw. It's to entice. Can I just tell you something? You're fish bait. (laughs) Jesus said, I'll make you become fishers of men. And you and I are all all we are. It's smelly and all that is your. You and I are supposed to be attractive to those that are lost so that they might come to know who Christ is. But it's his image. It's not my image. Jesus is enticing. I'm not enticing, but Christ is. Because Christ gave all so that he'd win all, win some. See, we do not learn to show off ourselves, but so we can show him off to the world. We, listen, we don't sing that song this morning and, and, and Becky, thank you for leading this song because this was really uh, on my heart yesterday. Show us your glory. Show me your glory. 
You know, a lot of times we do that because, or, or, or I, let, me, let me rephrase that. Sometimes people sing that or sometimes they have that thought process because I just want God to show up and, and show me something gr- so great and magnificent so that I'll believe in him. How much more great and magnificent does he have to do than to die for you? Yes, I want to encounter his presence. Yes, I want to know in him a greater measure and a greater depth. Yes, I want to experience him in a, in a new way and all those things. But can I tell you something? Even if I don't, that doesn't uh, minimize him at all. It doesn't make him less of a savior or less of a man or any of those things. But can I tell you something this morning? That I don't desire to show him, for him to show me his glory just so that I can say, okay, yeah, I still believe in you. I desire him to show me his glory so that when I leave here, that my life would reveal Reveal his glory. I, I like this thought that we marinate in his presence. That we marinate in his presence. That's what discipleship should do is that we, that we sit at his feet and we marinate in his presence. That when we leave, we smell like Jesus. When we leave, we talk like Jesus. When we leave, we see like Jesus. When we, when we leave, we touch like Jesus. Because Jesus isn't wanting us to become more educated. He's wanting us to be transformed into his image. Sin separated us, but God desires to transform us back into his image. And he does that through us allowing his spirit to, dis- to disciple us. We learn of him to know his will and his ways so that we can make him known to the world. The reason I want you to do the discipleship challenge or the one to grow on challenge, the reason I want you to do disciples, the reason I want you to be his disciples is not so that, so that people would look and go, oh, they go to Pastor Scott's church. I, listen, I, like I said, I don't get any extra credit. But the reason I desire that is because I, I believe that he's called his church to be an example of him in this earth today. But we don't do it by ourselves. We can't do it on our own. It's only by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does that as he teaches us and he shows us his will and his way. So discipleship. is bringing us back in to our right place, back into his image. Let us create man in our image, not in my image, but in God's image. Why? So that the world will know who the Father is. Eugene Peterson in his book, A Long Long Obedience in the Same Direction, writes, It is not difficult in our world to get a person interested in the message of the gospel. It is terrifically difficult to sustain the interest. Millions of people in our culture make decisions for Christ, but there there is a dreadful attrition rate. Many claim to have been born again, but the evidence for mature Christian discipleship is slim. In our kind of culture, In our kind of culture, anything, even news about God, can be sold if it's packaged freshly. But when it loses its novelty, it goes on the garbage heap. There is a great market for religious experience in our world. There is little enthusiasm for the patient acquisition of virtue, little inclination to sign up for a long apprenticeship in what earlier Christians called holiness. Discipleship is a process. Discipleship is a lifestyle. Discipleship even hurts sometimes. But can I tell you something? If we would come into the discipleship of Christ, then we could, he would make himself fully known to us and we would make him fully known. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he says, if you love me, if you keep my commands, then what I'll do is I'll come and I'll manifest. I'll make myself known to you. He doesn't make himself known to us just so that we can have the little uh, nice uh, emotional uh, experience so that we can feel the little goosebumps up and down our back. He makes himself known to us so that we can make him known. Church, What is your discipleship looking like? 
Is it making him known? Or is it just a self-help, pro- help, self-help project that you're doing at the beginning of the year so maybe you can have a better year this year than you did last year? I've put some things out there. The one, the one to grow on challenge. Listen, it's a challenge. The reason is because it should be in our DNA because it's in Christ's DNA to disciple and to win the lost. I give it to you as a challenge just so I can put it in the forefront and say, hey, listen, it's in our, if, if we know Christ, then our, in our spirit, it's already in our DNA to be a discipler and to be a soul winner. Some would say, well, Pastor Scott, that's really not me. I'm shy. I'm, I'm not worried about what your personality is. I'm not worried about what, how you think about it. I'm wanting, if you'll come into contact with Christ, if you'll become a disciple, he, it doesn't matter if you're, you're loud, soft. It doesn't matter if you'll come into contact with him. He'll use your personality to be a soul winner and a disciple maker. You have no excuse. I have no excuse. Because it's in my DNA, because I'm in Christ, to be a soul winner and a discipleship maker. But the only way I can do that is for me to submit to him in my own personal, personal walk with him so that we can make him known. Father, I pray today that your spirit would challenge us that your spirit would teach us. Father, I love you today. Amen. Amen. I bless the Lord. Here before, here in just a few moments, we'll prepare to receive our...